Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of No One's a Critic. I'm Kino, joined as always by Mac. How are you doing this week, Mac? Can't complain. Um, we are gearing up. I work at a bar, as probably I've mentioned before, um, and we are gearing up for St. Patty's uh, tomorrow. Uh, we It's Chicago. I think like tomorrow is the dying of the river. And oh, yeah, Sunday, yeah, that thing they yeah, do. And then Sunday is officially St. Patty's, so both days are probably going to be kind of crazy. So, me and yeah, the people go crazy on uh, St. Patrick's Day. It's in fact, funny, funny enough, that was even an episode of South Park, um, which we are going to be talking about this episode. But they did a whole uh, St. Patrick's Day themed episode about that. Did they? I don't even remember that. Or maybe it was one of the seasons I did. It was from the newer seasons. Yeah, okay. I, I I saw parts of it. I I haven't kept up to date with all the latest seasons but i'll tune in you know to random episodes here and there as it goes on but um yeah we're gonna be talking that's kind of usually we do a whole little spiel but that's kind of a perfect uh segue into the episode which um we we mentioned this last one we we talked about south park and was we were like we should break this off into its own episode um because that is in my mind pretty much the only show that has been consistently funny for most of its inception. Not to say that there aren't lulls or parts that are not as good as other parts of it, but um, from pretty early on, like the nineties or whenever it came out early two thousands, whenever um, to, to nowadays, it's still considered to be a pretty good, funny show, which is very surprising when you think of stuff like Simpsons, which everyone acknowledges fell off family guy snl like a lot of these long-running comedy shows people are like oh you know it's not really good anymore but i think i think most people would say even if they don't love the newer stuff i think most people would say south park is still pretty good most of the time yeah i'm I'm sure there's probably some episodes where i'm like um i mean i i actually never even really i mean like obviously we can go into that that's sort of like um a topic that's been probably been sort of like um I don't want to say controversial, but sort of like put into question for probably the entire show's run, which is if we're, when we're talking about South Park about being political. Um, what exactly are the politics of? Because like obviously, I'm not a big fan of like oh putting you know a singular person into a certain box, left, right, you know. Because I think it's like usually if you because like like for me like I consider myself someone more on the left, but if you actually ask me like issue by issue you'll probably find a lot of like variants um so yeah i wonder what the creators uh matt stone and trey parker where they sort of fall on the political angle um i've heard them sorry go 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 on oh just that like um you know with south park it's like sometimes or you know it seems like sometimes both sides will be like south park is based or south park is cringe and it'll depending on the episode depending on the topic they're either like spot on and they're like, or they're like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I've heard, um, uh, Matt and Trey being described as like the dirt bag left, which is, uh, similar to come down, which we talked about on another episode too, Hell but it's yeah. like, <laughs> it's, it, it's very clear. I think like reading into their work, they, they probably lean left as most of all Hollywood does. Right. But they're the kind of left who is like, not afraid to one poke fun at their own side, but also to do some stuff that, you know, a lot of leftists or liberals would not be happy with. A great example is like um, the one where Randy says the N word, right? It's a very controversial episode to have someone have something like that in there. But I think to, to, to their point, right. It's not that that's, what's so funny about it. Just like how wrong that situation, the characters find themselves in. Um, So I think, I think it's a very it's safe to say they probably lean left overall, but they're not afraid to be a little bit controversial. Like they're not they're not tied to their politics, which is why I think they're so funny, right? They'll they'll make jokes even if they're offensive if they're funny. Yeah. Um yeah, that oh that's the apology to Jesse Jackson. That's yeah. the classic. Because I remember that's best, when that that's one probably the best episode they've ever done. Might be the best one. I, I yeah, I could actually cause you know, I mean obviously some people will put like, you know, Scott Tennerman couple of the classics i mean that's a classic yeah. too um but yeah that the n-word guy episode that might be it's just so perfect from beginning it's to so end funny. the 
message it's conveying they do it so perfectly yeah where it's it seems so farcical and there's yeah. that <laughs> there's the scene where randy's in front of the entire like black caucus and he's like yeah you guys just don't understand how yeah. much it sucks to have someone call yeah, you a word. He's the you know, one that's yeah. being discriminated against, which yeah. is, you know, the joke. And of course, there's the whole Stan and, and token stuff about like him finally just acknowledging he doesn't get it. So again, like, you could look at that episode, right? And be like, obviously the message is like, you shouldn't say the N word, right? White people shouldn't say the N word. Um, but it's so, it's so ridiculous. And they're not afraid to go into that territory where a lot of, I, I think that's why, so many people enjoy South Park because a lot of left leaning, you know, comedies, comedy shows would, would be scared to go into that territory. They wouldn't even touch something like that. Or if they did, it would be from a much safer position. But again, South Park is very comfortable getting right into the thick of things. And they absolutely also do mock a lot of, you know, liberal ideas and stuff like that. So it, it has a very broad appeal, even if I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain that Matt and Trey probably are are on the left here. Yeah. Um, well, it's funny. Cause like, that's sort of what we touched on. I think it was last episode um, where it was like, cause South Park always sort of has this reputation of being like political, like being hyper political and being hyper topical. Um, but what's actually funny is when I actually look back um, at like, sort of like the golden age, which I would probably put between like seasons four through 10, maybe 11, maybe 12. Um, I think the first couple seasons, one, two, three, there's some good stuff in there, but they are kind of rough. Um, season four, I think is where it really started to take off. And then season five is like, I think we, the last time we were on, we like went through them. Season five is just like all bangers. Like if you, again, if you told me that was like a greatest hits compilation, I would believe you. Um, but it's interesting because like going through a lot of them and like my memories of them, many of them were very, um, they did have political content. They, they were making, they were dealing with like their stories were dealing with like politics and topical, um, topical topics. I should, yeah, there you go. Um, but none of it was like super, super like in the in the moment so like uh the contrast that would be like snl which is a show that is whatever happens like that week or like within like the couple weeks they're making fun of it on the show whereas with salt park it was more like it was more about like and obviously they did make fun of like certain figures like christopher reeve or the one where he like kills the fetuses and he like sucks their life force out or uh rob reiner barbara streisand you know all these uh, Tom Cruise, of course, but um, Scientology, but it was more like, so for example, like the goo, the goo back episode where the people from the future come and it's a commentary on immigration. It was more sort of like generally in the culture, the zeitgeist. It wasn't more just like, hey, we're talking about like Trump said something, you know, or Biden said something or making an episode on that exact thing. Um, yeah. So it's, it's sort of weird when people say, oh, it is political. It is. And I'm like, it is, but not necessarily in a lot of way I think people use the term or would use the term today. Well, I think it became more topical because, again, there's a difference between being political versus being topical. Like some yes, issues. That's a good point. Yes. Violence, and so it doesn't it doesn't really matter when they cover it. Like, again, the goo bags episode or there's a whole bunch of examples like that. Um, but as the series went on, as, it, as, as we get into the later seasons, then it really started to feel like it was uh, becoming uh, topical um, about certain stuff. And one of the great examples of that is uh, the episode where, or the season where um, Mr. Garrison basically is Trump and it was leading into the election versus him and Hillary Clinton. And they were, they were writing episodes as that was happening. Um, and funny enough, it, that season kind of ends. I don't know if you saw that season or not, but it's it's telling one story the whole, the whole time. Like each episode leads into the next. It was sort and, of their first. It was their first. Yeah, it's the first time trying that. Yeah, it was very different, right? Yeah, and a lot of people didn't like it. I I didn't love it as much as their classic stuff, but I did respect them trying. But um, what was what was funny about that though was, uh, you could almost tell that uh, when when Trump became president that they weren't like really expecting it like they they were setting up kind of like plot lines with like hillary clinton and like uh cartman that was the season cartman had a girlfriend 
and it was like there was this kind of oh, anti yeah, women that. That thing was, and Elon yeah. Musk and female comedians and there was all this stuff and it kind of didn't pay off into anything because you can tell this they they re- I think they really felt like most of the country did that Hillary was going to win um and they were kind of setting up that storyline for that and then when Trump won they kind of that that final episode when he when he wins is just like everyone's just so shocked um including uh, Garrison himself so um there, there's some downsides to that but uh I, I feel like again later on is when they started trying to really keep up with the news and like everything that happened in the news was going to be an episode of South Park. Yeah, and it's like I don't know if that's sort of like I don't want because again, like to your point, I I kind of fell off of it when I was probably around like you know eleven or twelve, season eleven, twelve, and yeah, I just kind of felt like I don't know, it just doesn't feel the same. Um, I don't think it's gotten worse necessarily. Um. But it just kind of doesn't really feel the same. I don't really know why. Um, and I think it, yeah, and I think it was partially because when I, again, when I look back to like all the classic South Park episodes, they were more like, you know, and, and some of them weren't even political at all. Um, you know, there was Cripple Fight, you know, um, there was uh, Scott Tenor Men Must Die. That's the classic. Um Fun time. I think it was Good Times with Weapons where they're like the whole uh, the world of Warcraft episode, which granted was, you know, world of Warcraft was in the zeitgeist, but it wasn't like, you know, it was just sort of like telling a fun story. Um, so a lot of those classic episodes really aren't like, um, super political or at all. Um, and I almost wonder if it's like, you know, cause we've talked about before when we're talking about particularly, I mean, drama, serialized dramas as well, but just, um, um particularly like comedy situational comedy sitcoms what have you uh there does seem to be sort of like a half-life for them or or sort of like a shelf life where they're like first couple seasons kind of rough they're figuring things out they're trying to the office parks and rec simpson south park it you know it's pretty consistent and then around season three or four it kind of picks up it gets there it's like okay now they're they're like in the zone they're in the pocket and that can go you know for maybe three or four seasons in the terms for South Park and the Simpsons it lasted to around season 10 and then it started to kind of taper off where it's just like you can only get so much mileage out of particular characters particular stories before sort of like the levy starts to break I guess you could say I think that that is a problem with the later seasons I feel like they've neglected a lot of the character stuff that made the the early seasons so great in favor of again more kind of topical stuff and it's not to say that it's not funny like i I, there's there's usually at least a few jokes in the new episodes that like i really laugh at like there's one uh what they do about school shootings um and uh and everyone besides uh stan's mom is so nonchalant about about school oh i remember that one yeah all the time and then there's a scene where uh they're like oh you're talking about the shooting and they're like yeah and then the dad's like who shot up the school? Was it you? <laughs> like it, it's it's so funny how nonchalant they're being. That episode, I don't feel like it came together like the story. Like there was a whole thing going on in there with like Tolkien and uh, Cartman, but they're, they're usually like really funny jokes that I'll I'll still really laugh at. But I agree with you that a lot of the earlier episodes they they tied it in with the characters so much that the story itself is really funny not just the jokes not just the commentary but the whole episode itself is a very cohesive experience and i think that that's what's missing from the newer seasons for me they just they're they're funny to an extent but they're not cohesive stories that's a good way to put it maybe that's it's because again like looking back i'm like i was shocked at how um and actually this is actually the truth for a lot of you know sitcom shows um because sort of like the structure of many sitcoms and in some cases, even serialized dramas um, is this idea of, you know, you have the a plot, you have the B plot, you have the C plot and the D plot. Um, However, what I noticed was that in some cases, whether it's a drama or a comedy, it seems like the episodes that are more focused around an a, just a single a plot that just kind of stay on track and just focus on that seem to usually in most cases be considered the best so like for example scott tenorman must die that was a very one track episode there wasn't like three other subplots going on um 
Casa Bonita, where Cartman wants to go to Kyle's birthday party, and he, yeah. so he he convinces Butters that the world has yeah. ended, and he puts him in a shelter. Um, again, very very focused. Um, and then apologies to Jesse. Although that was this, there's a subplot of <laughs> Cartman and like the the dwarf dude. He's like, oh the, the, yeah, 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 the counselor. <laughs> Cartman yeah, yeah. can't hold it in. Yeah. Um, I thought that, that uh, funny enough, I actually thought that was a very good, um, despite it not having, despite it being a separate story, it was very smart in that it showed sort of like, you know, words are like bullets, but it's kind of like, that's kind of stupid. That's, that yeah. attitude. it's like, no, of course we're human. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Oh, sticks and stones. It's like, no, eventually yeah. that shit can get to you. Like yeah, that's yeah. kind of a foolish, naive view of things. Yeah. Yeah. And again, like another show might have shied away from like because the dwarf character in that episode loses. I mean, he he beats Cartman, but only by like kind of a sucker punching him, basically. And another show would have had him being triumphant over the the kind of, uh, you know, evil character like Cartman. But they're, again, they're not afraid of being controversial or or showing some some stuff like that. So, yeah, again, that, that's probably the best episode overall. And I do think that like a lot of the earlier episodes even when there was some commentary, like some political commentary, there was a lot of episodes with just the boys being like, like young kids and not, not kind of understanding the world. Like the lice episode. I, I, I always found that one very funny when they're like, they're trying to figure out which of them has lice and they have this whole thing or when they're, or when the boys and girls get sexual education and they like, they, they get taught wrong basically. And, and they, they go to war with each other. There's a lot of like, just uh, kids being, hyper exaggerated kids and Mm -hmm. i think that a lot of uh the newer episodes don't do that they try to an extent but it's shrouded in so much like commentary and so much like this is an allegory for you know some news story we're covering that we do lose some of that just like kind of fun like again like the world of warcraft episode just having fun making fun of something in the culture but um ultimately just it's about the kids and it's that story or I'm 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 going through the episodes like for example like um Kenny dies uh the one where you know he of course he's been dying every episode but then all of a sudden um and is that the one where I think is that the one where he dies because he has to go to heaven to play the PS Vita or something and like command the armies of or is that a different yes one? That, I, well I think Kenny dies in that's in season five and then in season six he stays dead for a long time um and i think they do i think it's the ladder to heaven episode maybe that they do I'm, i am have the oh, that was another up. great one that's actually that's a perfect example of to your point where the the entire plot is based around stan kyle and cartman they just want to um they just want to go get the it was like a coupon for free. And so they're building it. And then all the adults are like, Oh my God, it's so sweet. But then later China is also building a lot of heaven. That was a very, to your point, I think that was a great example of a, um, episode where it's like, you have the innocence of the kids, but also there's like the social commentary, but it's, it's all in service of like making or jokes or like just, ref- it wasn't like, again, it wasn't an episode where it's like, Oh, this thing happened and we have to make it about this. It wasn't, it was like, you know, it was like sort of like a commentary on, you know, like post 9 11. You had like, you know, national rivalries and, and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, I just, I'm looking at the descriptions. It wasn't that episode where they had, but I, I know the one you're talking about where Kenny's like commanding armies using the, uh, the, the PlayStation Vita, you get to play portable, whatever it was. Which one um, is that? I forget. They, they did do something like that where it was, I don't even that might not have been when he was dead because didn't he come back to life and have to kill himself or something to go back to heaven? I don't remember. I don't remember um, either. Damn. But but they, I, again, I know that episode's a very funny one too. Um, God damn, it's just I'm, I'm looking through the episodes right now and like we talked about this before, but from like season four until like ten for me is like this golden run of like. I can't find one bad episode in this. Almost. Whole... Well, it's funny because then they're like, there are, but they're like, so not only are they like 
outliers, but they're like, re- like it's not just that they're like, oh, they aren't like bangers. They're like really weird. So like, for example, uh, one of the most famous examples is um, uh, Pip. You remember that is one? That it was the that, one. Is that from this yeah. season? Oh, yeah, Man. yeah, yeah, yeah. The See, okay, that's season four. You're oh, right. well, that was season four. Yeah, so right. The, um, let me but see. But no, I know what you're talking about. It was like, it was this weird parody of of the classic Dickens story, Great Expectations or whatever. Yeah, which was so just like, what? I don't know why they <laughs> did that. I, I, I remember there was some kind of twist at the end where they, they made it like ridiculous, the story. But um, yeah, no, it was a weird is a weird one yeah actually you're right i'm I'm actually i'm going through it and i they're all all great yeah um that entire era that was just so what was it 2000 looking on i think season four does have some weaker ones but definitely starting season five season five is you get you get like no non-stop like all these episodes are fucking amazing um it's also funny too because like now i'm going through it um, I'd probably say like season nine is where th- there's still great episodes, even into season 11, because that's when Jesse Jackson is on. Um, I will say, I think probably it looks like. Probably season 12 is where, for me, at least it started to kind of it just didn't feel the same. Um, yeah, I agree. Season 12. And you know what? You know, the episode immediately jumping out at me is uh, the pandemic, which w- or I guess just called pandemic and pandemic Two, the startling which was a was a parody of um the happening the uh the Mark Wahlberg movie yes but it was like it was like guinea pigs and they had to go to uh like South America to to find them like to stop the guinea pigs I don't know it was weird but I remember I not really liking that one as much there was some funny stuff with like Craig in those episodes like hating the main boys and you mm-hmm. realize just kind of what like pieces of shit they are really to pretty much everyone around them um but yeah i remember that there, there's some, there's a lot of good episodes in the season but i remember thinking there's some weak ones in this one too yeah and i'm, I'm going through too there's a couple of weird ones like um uh a million little fibers which is the one with uh Towley and he writes the novel oh yeah, yeah which yeah. was it was that was a very topical one that was based off yeah. of the dude who lied with Oprah's Oprah. book club yeah yeah, yeah. um and then Oprah's like Minge and her asshole are like having yeah, a, yeah. they have a whole drama. Um and then yeah, well it's funny too, because I'm going through it too, and it's like um I think and not to say like it was um bad or anything. I will say I think season nine, uh Mr. Garrison's fancy new vagina, yeah, where he had the when you transitioned. I think yeah. that was a part where I, I I don't think it wasn't where it was like, oh, it stopped being funny or anything like that. But it was more for me. It was like. Um, um I think because I, I think I was too young and I didn't really understand it. And it was pretty ahead of its time in terms of like be, being topical, believe it or mm. not. Um, or I didn't even know. I was like, what the hell is going on here? What are we doing? Yeah, yeah that was the one where. Mr. Garrison becomes a woman, but also um, Kyle becomes a black man and um, his dad becomes a dolphin, which is so fucking ridiculous. But oh, uh, yeah, God, that, that was, was a funny strange. one. That was a funny one, too. I almost wonder how many of these episodes were like would be sort of like if they came out now, not necessarily because, you know, I, I don't really like that framing of like, oh, it couldn't, you know, this couldn't be made today and it's like for me it's not so much that i think you could it's not so much the topic i think it to some extent it could be how do you handle the topic or how are you approaching the topic because it's like when people say that it's like oh this movie couldn't be made today and it's like well in some cases um because like there, are like the one thing that jumps out to me is there are plenty of movies in like the early 2000s where um, essay against men was always played for a laugh. Um, like Wedding Crashers was a big one where one of the characters actually gets like assaulted, Vince Vaughn, and it's completely played for laughs. Now, someone might ask, it's like, well, could this be made today? It's like, well, I think the general plot of it, yeah. But are there certain jokes that probably wouldn't fly? No, 
are, are there certain jokes that wouldn't fly? Yes. But is that because like people are more sensitive or like more snowflakes? It's like, no, I think it's just that like our understanding of certain things have changed or, you know, the, the culture has shifted. So I don't know. It's because like, I wouldn't say like, you know, if that movie came out and people were outraged at that scene, I wouldn't say it's like, oh, people are just like so sensitive now. And it's like, well, that's not really what the issue is. It's more that our, um, it's more that our, I'm trying to think of the right word. The Overton window, I guess, has shifted. I don't know. It's probably both. I think, I mean, you can look at South Park's humor and I'm sure it's evolved too over time where they wouldn't make the same jokes they made back in the day. Um, Which is... I even, I, I, there's even something that's popping into my head. I don't remember what episode, but it was almost like they did a commentary about like jokes they made in the past or something. Is there an episode like that? Because I'm, it, I'm thinking know. of one right now, but I, it's not. Nothing's popping in my head immediately, like the name or anything. Kind of sounds familiar. Um, or maybe that they revisited points they made. Um, yeah, because again, it's like it's not. I think people frame it in this sort of like, um, bad faith way where it's like, oh, they're you know bowing to cancel culture and stuff like that. It's like, is it that or is it more like, hey, I kind of realized in retrospect. Cause like, I'm trying to think of like, I held a lot of different opinions when I was like, I don't know, in my like late teens or early twenties that I do now. And people are like, Oh, you, you change your opinions cause you were pressured to, or you felt pressure from society. And it's like, looking back, I'm like, that's not really why it's just like, and, but back then it wasn't like, I was like, I was indoctrinated into like a terrible ideology. It's just that, no, you just have opinions that are sort of, you are, are based off the information or education you have at the time. And then as you get older, you're kind of like, oh, okay, I see more nuance to it. I may not have tackled it that way. I don't know. It, I feel like it's either always, if you felt that way back then, you were just a bigot and now you're not a bigot, which I'm like, eh, I don't, I wouldn't say that. Or you've let like cancel culture, like influence you and destroy your sense of self. And I'm like, yeah, and, I don't think there's anything wrong with changing your, you know, opinions or stance or anything like that. I do. I don't, I don't feel like creators and stuff should have to like apologize for their past work and basically be like, yeah, that's, Oh, it was wrong when I made this joke. Like, no, if it was, it was, if it was funny when you made that joke, it's funny, right? It doesn't like, sure. You could change your, your opinions now and maybe you won't make the same joke nowadays, but it doesn't, you, you have to judge things in the context of when they came out in and, you know, I don't I don't think creators have anything to apologize for that. And, no, you know, the one I was thinking of right now is when they bring in PC principal um, yeah. and he's like just ranting against the town of like, because, you know, the Chinese, Go, uh, Let's go. the Ch- <laughs> the Chinese uh, restaurant owner, shitty, shitty shrimp and shitty chicken. Oh, yeah, I remember that. He's a white guy. <laughs> he's a white guy doing like Asian face, basically. Oh, yeah. Um, he's he like, <laughs> he's like, what the fuck is this? And it's like, um, but again, I don't think that was them apologizing for that. It was almost like poking fun at just how unafraid of being ridiculous they are. And they didn't they didn't stop like that character or whatever. They just they acknowledge that people like PC principal who they're making fun of would find a lot of their past stuff super offensive. So yes, that makes um, sense. Again, I think that that's completely fine. And, <laughs> and again, I, I I do think for some of these things, people are probably a little too sensitive. Like the whole, there's, there was a lot of stuff about um, uh, characters from like other uh, comedies being like voiced, like they were like minority characters and being voiced by white people, like Apu from Simpsons or Cleveland from uh, Family Guy. And they had to get recast as as their proper voice actors. And I'm just like, who the fuck cares? Like, it's a little honestly. bit extreme, guys. Like, come on, what are we doing here? Like, there, it, it wasn't even offensive. Like, again, the the, the sh- I love the shitty shrimp, uh, shitty chicken guy. Oh, from my South God. Park. Even though he's making the... fun of, you know, people like me. That's it's so fucking funny. Well, it's well, it's weird, too, because it's like that. But that's the thing, though. It's like when I look back at that and here's so like the way I put it, um, you know, we talked about this a lot with because this is something I think both sides don't really understand when it comes to diversity, because um, on the left, you'll kind of have people. It's like any sort of like negative portrayal or like stereotypical portrayal of a minority character is bad. So, for example, you can't have, 
you know, an Asian dude running a laundromat. You can't have a black guy who's like a gangster, et cetera, et cetera. You can't have a gay person who like has HIV or like is like catty or whatever the fuck. Um, and, but for me, but then the, um, then the right will say, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, that, that shit doesn't matter. Like, why are you policing this? Um, you know, we should just allow art to exist. And I think we've talked about this and this is sort of like my view where it's like, it's more about patterns. It's not so much about like, Hey, this one show had a black guy who is a gangster. It's, Hey, if I'm watching TV and every black guy is a gangster, that's a little weird. That's when we're kind of like, okay. But then I find it weird when people like they, to your point, they kind of get like hyper vigilant and they're like, we're going to single out this one show because the villain's a black guy. And it's like, Eh, it's a little that's you're kind of missing the point you're becoming too sort of like focused in um but regardless it's like what's funny about that is that with a uh, shitty chicken guy he was one he was so over the top that it almost like was self parodying you know um like it, it it was like a weird it's kind of like that thing where it's like um funny enough south park does this where it's like if you tell a joke enough times it stops being funny but then at some point it gets funny again it's sort of like almost with the shitty chicken guy he was so stereotypical that it almost was like not stereotypical because he was so over the top oh and the stupid mongolian you break down (laughs) (laughs) again again it's clear that you know I, i think you can tell these things like they didn't mean anything offensive by that it was again just being so fucking ridiculous that it's like it's funny and again i don't know any asian people who have ever been offended by oh it's always it's mostly white kids <laughs> it's usually white kids yeah <laughs> and i i'm pretty sure that's most of who's driving a lot of like these like apu can't be voiced by that person cleveland brown can't be voiced by whatever it's like i really doubt they found that many black people who are offended by that and no i mean if they change well, it who gives a fuck either but like I don't really care either way, but I, I do think a lot of this discourse is, is pretty stupid when we're, we're talking about, again, really ridiculous comedy shows. That's like, this is in no way a representation of real life. These are hyper exaggerated characters. It would be like looking at Mr. Garrison and being like, oh, this is the average gay man. Like, no, he's like the most ridiculous out there character of all time. And that's what makes him funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's funny because I think. Um, I recently learned this stat. And I don't know if I mentioned it to you, maybe like a couple episodes ago, but someone mentioned when they're talking about um book banning, like in schools, like, you know, when you hear about like Catcher in the Rye or like Huckleberry Finn being banned, I think they said that like 60% of all banned book bannings in schools across the country are the result of the efforts of like 11 people like they're just literally like these 11 people who were like super focused on getting rid of like what they appear to like and they are so determined that they just call these schools and they never shut the hell up about it and eventually the schools are like all right fine god damn it like stop bugging us well, well that's um, what people always talk about is like the the loud minority versus the silent majority it's like i think for a lot of stuff especially online discourse which i always tell people like like don't like get your don't think that like the average twitter user reflects the average person in the world like right the, 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 these like these online communities create like such echo chambers that they seem like more than they actually are which is that exact same thing for a lot of stuff like this i think the average the average person doesn't care about this stuff nearly as much as a lot of this online discourse and the same thing is true of both sides i think too a lot of times when people get offended by like you know oh this this show is woke or this movie's woke or whatever it's like I, the vast majority of people don't give a shit it's like a few people online really kind of parodying the same things and like making it seem like a lot of people give a shit about this when in reality no one does I th- that's sort of what's going on right now i don't know if you know about the whole like twitter drama but there's like you know the whole quote unquote Gamergate two is coming back. Um and it's funny because I actually think part of the reason it's not gonna be able to get off the ground or why it's not getting off the ground. Well for multiple reasons. One of the big reasons I think um I think Twitter has become such an absolute 
like fires it's been such a fucking dumpster fire now where like you have like straight up like openly racist accounts just still operating like like just unapologetically um with with like tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of followers like just like open just like straight up like nazi propaganda um and the issue is what's happening is that back in like you know the first like you know gamergate era i think it was like 2014 um it was a lot more insulated and and to, to, to the point about the book bannings it is it's comforting but also scary how a very small group of very dedicated motivated people can make a difference um which can be a good thing or a bad thing. Um, but the issue now is that I think because Twitter has become such an open, you know, basically an open sewer, even more so than it used to be, um, everything's kind of getting like lost. So for example, like there are people who are um, with the whole, you know, the whole gamer gay people, they're, they're focusing on one issue. And I think that to some extent, the issue has, legitimacy i think there are elements that what they're talking about is um warranted and i think that they do have legitimate gripes the issue is that because all the p- other people around them are so openly against it for like completely different really like fucked up bigoted reasons they can't sp- they can't sort of like separate themselves from them because everyone's like super open about it you know, there's no organization. It's just everyone's just spouting off their opinions. And it just becomes this. You because if, you know, if you put forth an argument that you think is legitimate, all it takes is that person to be like, yeah, but this person said like some crazy racist shit and, they, and they're on your side. Right. It's like, well, hang on. Yes and no. We're on the. Yeah. And it's just. I, I don't even wonder. I, ironically, I think the issue with like Twitter is because it's or even social media is that it has opened up so many avenues of communication and you know uh advocacy that it almost is it's kind of like that paradox of like you know if you give someone two choices they're like okay i can either choose a or b that's fine but if you give someone a hundred choices it's like it almost kind of like has the reverse effect where they kind of like get paranoid and they freak out and they get anxious. Like, I don't know what to do with so many choices. Um, it almost kind of like it goes up. Good, good, good. And then it kind of has like a tipping point in a way. Yeah. yeah. It, here's the thing though, about like all this discourse about like Nazi accounts and racist accounts and stuff like that is like, again, I think you need to take some of the stuff with a grain of thought. I think a lot of people doing that are just trolling. Like in, and, and I, I I know there's going to be people who make the argument of like, you know, there is no such thing as like ironic racism, right? It's just racism. Um, And I don't, it's all, I don't disagree with that. Like, I don't think you're wrong to think that way. Um, But again, I think that people being like, oh my God, there's all these Nazis rising up on Twitter. I like, no, it's, it's mostly just, uh, just trolls. Not to say that there aren't probably some people out there like that, but I think the vast majority of people who are doing stuff like that are just trolling. They just want, to get a reaction out of you. And again, I don't think it actually reflects what the vast majority of people in real life are actually like. Again, people feel very comfortable saying stuff online because there's no real kind of uh, feedback, right? There's no consequences to your actions. And again, I'm not advocating people do that. People are going to take that the wrong way. But I'm just saying, I don't, I, I tend to look at stuff with a grain of salt being like, oh my God, look at what, Twitter's platforming all these people and it's like the vast majority of them are just fucking dumbass kids just trolling. Well, I think, well, I think that's sort of the issue where it's like, I I don't necessarily think the makeup of the number, like, I don't necessarily think that like, I mean, I guess you could argue that like have there been certain like political shifts where uh, particularly, I think they've done like studies where nowadays a lot of women are, are sort of like veering more to the left, which I, I actually think that's always been the case. Um, but particularly young men are moving more to sort of like right wing sort of like a right, you know, affiliated groups. Um, but to your point, it usually, at least from what I say, or from what I've seen, it usually isn't because like these guys are like, actually they're like secret fascists and they're, you know, they're, you know, um, 
trying to like impose their power on people. It's more of like an issue of like, you know, kind of like lonely dudes and they kind of like, you know, they watch like fresh and fit or something and they get mad at women and they think that like, Oh, like going back to the fifties is the answer. And it's like, it's like, eh, it, it's more of an, it's more of an issue of like, um, what's what I'm looking for. It kind of like, you know, like the Dunning Kruger effect where, you know, you, you know a little bit about something and you think you're the shit and you know everything. But then as you learn more, you start to like, Oh shit, there's a lot. I don't know. I should like be humble. Um, I think that's sort of the issue where, you know, particularly when it comes to like the guys who are like, we need to go back to the fifties before all this. It's more of, it's more of an issue of like, they don't really, it's kind of, it's like being like a one issue voter. They just kind of like back in the fifties, you know, people were happy because there was a nuclear family and it's like, well, it's a lot more complicated than that. There's like way more other factors. Like there's a lot of reasons why we should not go back to like the 1950 model. Um, but sorry, to your point, um, I kind of veered off. It's it's not so much that I think um, the population of like, you know, people who would identify as like a straight up Nazi or like fascist has grown. I think the difference is like maybe like 10 years ago, there was a lot more of like the, to your point, like ironic. It, it all kind of had to hide behind ironic humor. Um, and, you know, the question, like, it's like, well, how do you tell a difference between someone who is being ironic and someone who isn't? And like the sucky truth was like, we don't really know. That's kind of the, that's kind of what sucks. And to your point, the, then the argument is like, well, even if you're being ironic, does the rhetoric still embolden these ideas? And I think that there is some legit legitimacy to that. Um, but I think the issue now is like, especially it kind of sucks for, you know, I'm not, I'm more left leaning, not on the right. And I actually think it kind of sucks for the, these guys because I think you're right. A lot of these dudes are just kind of like being, you know, they're being edgy. They're kind of just like trolling. They're just having fun. But because it's become so much, Twitter has become so emboldened and so much like is out in the air, all of a sudden they're realizing that all these people who were kind of like affiliated with them are just like coming out and saying all this like, actually, yeah, now we can say this. And all those dudes are like, oh, wait, hang on. You guys actually like believe that shit like unironically. And now they're kind of stuck because it's like, um, I, I don't side with those guys, but I also don't want to like side with like the libs. So you're like, fuck, I, I don't I don't know where to go right now. Well, I and I don't mean to say to like, I don't I don't want to get super political about this because I always I don't really care that much. But a lot of people are like they do that kind of stuff just because liberals are so fucking annoying. Like they are the most like annoying people on the planet. And even when they're kind of right about stuff, they're just so hateable. It's so just easy to just get pissed off at them for their kind of bullshit that I, again, I think a lot of people go to the other side just because, because they're so fucking annoying. Yeah. Which, to, but to say it's like a, whenever people do say that though, it like it's, as as true as that is, it is I like frustrating because it's like I feel like if you're changing your like political stances based off someone's annoying, that probably isn't good. That probably shows like a well. Like but a I, I think maturity. you I think you have to dis disconnect some of this like culture war stuff from politics. Again, I think a lot of people who are discussing the culture war stuff, which is like the whole Gamergate stuff, right? I don't. That's not really political to me inherently. It's not it's it's more the culture war stuff. And again, I think a lot of people are pushing back on stuff like forced diversity or wokeness or whatever. And again, I know a lot of those terms are buzzwords and you, you had a, a post about this recently, but um, I think putting aside any political stuff, just talking about culture war stuff, I think a lot of people um, are pushing back against the kind of liberal woke stuff just because they find it very annoying um, and it doesn't actively reflect politics and like political views. It's more so just like, I don't want this kind of annoying shit in my media. And you can argue whether that's right or wrong, but I'm saying, I think, I don't think it's like, and I don't think, I don't think a lot of this culture war stuff inherently reflects politics. Like it can, in some cases, don't get me wrong, but a lot of cases is just like, I find this annoying in my media and so I'm going to, you know, 
fight against that. Which I agree. That's why I usually try to push back when people say like, you know, everyone who says talks about woke is like, um, is like a, is a secretly a bigot. I'm like, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's even close to being true. I think just sometimes like, I think, I think the biggest issue for me when it comes to like woke and I, I to your point, I, I did make a post because like, I'm really trying, I've tried like several times to kind of like really nail down, like, what are we talking about? Like, what is, cause like to your point, people will talk about forest diversity or wokeness or stuff like this. And every time I try to like, be good faith and like try and like narrow it down. It's like, okay, what are we talking about? And they'll say like, Oh, it's like, well this, and it's like, okay, well, it doesn't seem like you're mad at this. It looks like you're mad at this. Uh, like, so for example, you know, particularly when it comes to like forest diversity, nine times out of 10, when I look at it, or, or uh, I think a mistake people make is they'll, if, so for example, let's say a character was like race swapped in a movie or something. Now that's happened in like many movies. I uh, one that's I was actually talking about we were talking about today. Um, Samuel Jackson is Nick Fury in the Avengers, um, and I'm, I'm actually doing a video on Hannibal. And there's actually a couple of race swaps and a couple of gender swaps in the show as well. Um, but when the show is and so this is sort of the issue. It's like when the show is good, if it's like Hannibal or like the Avengers, when it's something that like is good. People are like, okay, this is, you know, it's fine. It's like not a big deal. But then when the show is bad or if it's like poorly written and stuff, I think the issue is sometimes people will kind of like pivot to like, oh, but that's because of the race, like the race swap is part of the reason. It's like, I think we're kind of like, uh, you know, I think I brought up to you a perfect example. is like the Little Mermaid movie where it's like, would the movie have been better if Ariel was white? It's like, I don't think so. I, I, I it's, I think there are like way bigger issues in terms of it. And the issue for me is like, whenever I try to like narrow it down and really like nail down um, like what we're talking about, it kind of like falls apart. And then to your point, it's almost sort of like more of like a, it sounds weird to say, but like it's almost like more vibes of like, or feeling or like sort of like a stuff in the ether as opposed to like an actual issue that I can narrow down. But the, that, but the sort of the the issue with that, to your point, where I don't think a lot of these people are, you know, they're not doing this for political reasons, but because a lot of these terms are so flexible, it makes it very easy for people who do have political agendas to kind of sneak in and like, oh, this is how we can, a uh, perfect example, the whole Gamergate stuff, um, Matt Walsh, I think, or I think maybe Ben Shapiro too, but I think Matt Walsh, he tried to jump on the bandwagon, like about wokeness, yada, yada. But then all the gamer gator dudes were like, wait a minute, you've been shitting on gamers the last like five years and saying we're losers and saying we like games are like for degenerates. So that's an example of like, and, and I think that's a good divide where it's like, well, hang on, we're not with these people who are doing it for this reason. We're doing it for these reasons. Um, but I think when you're talking about like these like nebulous terms, separating those two groups becomes very, and to your point, it's like, well, how do you know who's doing it for this reason and who's doing it for this reason? And it's like, unfortunately, it's really difficult to figure that out. Yeah. And again, I don't really care either way. That's the, that's the biggest thing here. It's like, I don't really give a shit one way or the other, how these people think. I do think it is really annoying though, how a lot of these issues get, um, they get pulled into the culture war when I really don't think they should be. Um, oh, absolutely. Like on both a lot ends of, of the spectrum. Both ends. Oh they really god. like to co-opt. Oh my god. <laughs> they like to co-opt the thing and like, uh, and like use it as like ammunition in the culture, which makes it so fucking annoying to just enjoy a piece of media. And, um, you know, I, I might out myself here, and people might get pissed off at me, but I actually responded to that poll of yours that you did. Uh, mm-hmm. by the way, if you guys didn't see it, Max poll, but it was like, oh yeah, can, can a can a show be woke and also good? And believe it or not, I was one of like the ten percent that voted no. Um, well, and I the think... reason I oh sorry, go sorry. Well, let me finish. Right yeah. What why I voted no was because it's I don't think diversity is bad. I don't think even necessarily like race swapping is bad because one of the great examples, by the way, of a show that did race and gender swap is uh, the 2004 reimagining of Battlestar Galactica. 
um, which I really, really loved. I'm going to do a video on that show eventually, but I really, really love that. And they cast a lot of like men who were previously male roles into female characters. I thought it was great. Um, Starbuck was awesome on that show. Um, but my, and, and this, you could argue this is just my own personal opinion, but like my interpretation of woke. And I think I talked about this before on some of these things is like, my thing is like bad diversity writing is woke. Good diversity writing is not woke to me. Again, like the wire is not woke to me. And some people would argue that's not what woke means. Like woke is just about like, are you socially aware and socially conscious? And the wire is absolutely socially aware and socially conscious. But for me, because it's not written badly, I would never call it woke. But again, other people, a lot of this stuff has very nebulous definitions, including on the other side, by the way, I, I really hate when I see people uh, describing uh, people on the right as like incels when they they describe like people who are married or people with children as I've I've seen Ben Shapiro described as an incel and I'm like it's that's not what like that a, word means they're they're gesturing towards more of like a certain attitude towards yeah yeah I mean like you, could, you call them or... a loser you call them a beta male whatever you want to but like that's not what that word means right it's like probably and a, a lot of these terms just get very nebulous. Probably the big one for me for the left is when people use fascist. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. That's very like, well, hang on. That's a pretty loaded term. And we're talking about like, we're not talking about like a dude like, like, like a perfect example is like, are there people who probably want to um, ban porn per se? If you ask them like, hey, do you want to ban porn? They'd be like, yeah, probably. Like, yeah, that might be a good idea. I don't think now there are some people who are doing it for like, kind of like quasi fashy reasons like it's destroying our society the west is falling it's degenerate we have to return to like mm -hmm. you know christian values like it's like okay that does sound kind of weird but then there are people who were like well no it's because like you know people there's a lot of people get addicted to porn and stuff like yeah. that and there is like abuse in the industry so it's like these two people can agree on something but they can do so for completely yeah. different reasons and it's kind of weird if you like ask someone like hey do you think maybe like banning porn it's like well yeah or, or you know uh, i think they're they just decided to like the government's trying to like ban tiktok or something yeah um and then like on one hand i'm like on on the surface that might sound good and it's like oh yeah why because there is a lot of like mm -hmm. crap on there and like you know kids will go outside and yeah, play yeah, more yeah. but it's not you're not doing it for like then, but then there are people who are doing it like, you know, China's trying to like, you know, they're spreading propaganda and trying to destroy the West or yada, yada, yada. Or Russia's yeah. trying to like make girls go out and fuck dudes so they can't get married and the, our birth rate will decline. Like then it's kind of like, OK, now yeah. we're getting into like you've you've read a couple one too many like conspiracy and theory threads and people, or people using like fascism to describe any kind of authoritarianism is like really yes. stupid because the left and the right both advocate authoritarianism Absolutely. it's just for different issues and i think that's really stupid again I, i'm sure people will, people can bring up examples of like no here's someone who actually does believe in fascism and it's like yes you can find those odd you know people on their side but i just I think people exaggerate on the internet so fucking much. A lot of these issues, they co-opt all these issues. They make it a much bigger deal than it is. Um, and I just, I don't know. I, I, we, we talked about this many times. I just find the culture war just so fucking exhausting on both ends. I hate, because as much as you describe yourself as leaning to the left, I describe myself as leaning more conservative. And I find so many issues that but we're like, conservatives pick a fight about stupid. Like, who who gives a fuck about this? Why are you? Why is Ben Shapiro talking about Gamergate? Like this is not, this is not relevant at all. Why are you wasting people's time with this bullshit? Yeah, and to be clear, so everyone, and this is like again, if we're doing polarizing from our talks, I would say if this is like the center, like, and I'm to the left of it. Sorry, it's reversed. Um, I'd be here, and like you maybe might be there, but the people we're talking about are like here and here. Yeah, and so that's sort of where it gets to the point where it's like, okay, hold on. <laughs> like, we're kind of, um, oh, but sorry, that's, you brought up perfectly, um, and we can tie it back around because I know we got off into our tangent, as we always do. Um, I think, and I, I think I mentioned it before, when you mentioned about, like, the culture war co-opting things, I think South Park for so long 
was one of those things where, you know, you would see, hey, look, this South Park episode, the libs were like, yeah, it's like the fuck conservatives, like South Park's woke, hell yeah. And then the next week, the conservatives would be like, look at South Park owning the libs with PC principle. And, but then of course you would like watch the episodes and uh, and then they would argue back and forth. Like, no, you didn't watch the whole thing. If you saw the whole thing, you would see the context. And it's like, I feel like we're kind of, it is a cartoon show that, you know, we, we're not sure. It does seem like we're getting a little, like, you know, it could be flawed. It can make good points, yada, yada. But like, we are really bringing it into this, like, like a cultural gauntlet on either side. And it, but again, it what's ironic about it is like looking back to like the heyday of it, it never really seemed like it, it kind of got that reputation, but it never really was that kind of show. It never really was like a inherently political show. Not really. Um, or or is it not nearly as much as people I think view it as or like put or project onto if you will yeah yeah. i i don't think it was ever trying to tell you like here is what you need to believe like it's clear that the the writers believe in something Mm -hmm. but i never i never felt like they were trying to lecture the audience and i don't know i don't i i feel weird about taking your political beliefs from tv shows or media and stuff like that's a whole yes (laughs) sure sure it can it can inform how you think about certain stuff the the wire definitely opened my eyes to some of the some of the issues that i wasn't aware of previously but i wouldn't like i'm not gonna listen to david simon tell me like you know what i should believe or whatever like it can it can inform you to an extent and you can I, i think you should take you know opinions from a lot of different sources but i don't know the people who uh, again try to take their beliefs from like again a, a fucking comedy cartoon with cardboard cutout characters it's just kind of weird to me it's its main purpose is entertainment and that's how it has always succeeded in like it's sure there's politics and there's there's some morals and stuff like that but um at the end of the day it's just trying to entertain i, I think that's what good media should do it shouldn't necessarily try to lecture people like if people take away meaning from it great but uh, at the end of the day, you got to be entertainment first and foremost if you're going to succeed as a show. Yeah, well, that's what's weird too. Is like, I forget who said it, but um, there is something to be said about like if you ever like hear a story of someone being like, it's like you know I saw this or I read this and it changed my entire perspective and it it completely maybe change all this. It's like that's probably not good. Because one, it probably meant that you weren't like whatever you believe before. If like one book or like one TV show or like one debate or something will completely change your mind on it. It probably means that your beliefs, your, the beliefs you held first weren't very staunch. You probably just kind of like, oh, I think this is you really haven't thought about it that much. You haven't really looked at the evidence and made up your mind. Um now, again, the danger of that is like you don't want to be someone who never changes their mind or is never open to changing their mind. But if it happens that easily, like it's like, you know, I used to be like against like affirmative action or against like systemic racism. But then I saw The Wire. I'd be especially if it comes from like to your point, like a TV show or something. I'm like, hmm, OK, well, that's a little strange because then because then what will happen is then. Oh, I watched a wire and my opinion changed, but then I saw two Ben Shapiro videos and now my opinion changed again. And it's like, I don't really think that you're, it, it feels like you're following trends. You're not really like thinking about these issues yourself. Yeah. Um. And I also, again, to just bring about this cultural point, I think the vast majority of people, I, I might be being an optimist about this. I might be, you know, coping or whatever, but I think the vast majority of people are a lot closer to the middle than than Absolutely. online discourse would make you think like a great example for the whole Gamergate stuff going on right now, which it feels weird to even call it that. But let's just keep going and say um, there was there was this whole thing about um, this like EA dev, a uh, black woman who was talking about how she wouldn't hire white people on her team at all because white people are inherently racist and blah, blah, blah. And I was like. I looked at that discourse and the vast majority of people were calling her out on that, like right and left. Like, it, like again, you, your natural thing, if you believe like the online 
culture war bullshit you'd think the leftists would be like hell yeah sister you know fuck white people but no the vast majority of people even like minorities and stuff were like you know that's that's kind of fucked up that's racist like that's not being inclusive or whatever and yes there were some crazies on either end calling her out but um i i think really if you look past a lot of this discourse the vast majority of people would would if they were honest would be more towards the middle but again, online tends to amplify a lot of these voices to either end for, again, because they, they want attention. And the more extreme you are with some of this stuff, the more attention you get. Um, but I, I think the majority of us could get along more. And I hope I, I would advise people to pay less attention to online bullshit and more to just like real life and just trying to be a good person in real life yeah or take it with a grain of salt you know it's more of like to your point um well this is funny because uh this is a completely separate issue but i think it is important in terms of like putting this into perspective about like extremist opinions um when you when you're watching the olympics for example you think what you're watching is well um Oh, no, sorry. A better example is I, I tell us a lot, the guys, whenever they look at like fitness influencers on YouTube, nine times out of 10, what, what sort of sucks for the like the sort of like, you know, at your average dude is a lot of these dudes like it's like, oh, man, they have perfect pecs. They have perfect like muscle insertions. They have great genetics. And it's like, how come I can't achieve that? It's like, well, there's sort of like this weird feedback loop where it's like, part of the reason they probably got into fitness or became a fitness model is probably because they had some sort of like predilection. Like, you know, uh, uh, probably a perfect example is like, if you're like a dude who's like six foot five and people say, Hey, you're really tall. You should play that basketball. You make a great basketball player. And then you become a basketball player. It's like, it's like, well, I just, you know, I, it, it's, it's kind of like a positive feedback loop. Um, and, and to my point, what I meant about the Olympics was that, you know, if a kid shows promise when he's young, it's like, Hey, a kid, he ran like a really fast time. And then the coaches take notice and then the parents take notice and they're like, Hey, let's put him in this program. Hey, let's, you know, and then it's like this whole, like, cause like with the Olympics in order to, you, there's no like, you know, ragtag kid who just, you know, joins the Olympics and, you know, wins. It's like, no, these people have been training for like decades and they have had like millions of dollars put behind them so take that with a grain of salt um but to that point when we're talking about online discourse you're probably when you're looking at online discourse you're probably seeing a lot of extremist opinions but it's because they're the extremist opinions that they're getting the most play if i tweet if you tweet like a super nuanced opinion no one gives a shit if you say like wokeness is destroying the west or all white men are like a cancer to society. People are going to take notice. They're going to retweet them. And that's all you're going to see. And th so, yeah, to your, it, that's the funny thing. It's not even so much that I don't think um, it's not just people who are online compared to regular people offline. It's even online. I think the vast majority of people, even on Twitter, probably don't fall into either one of the extremist camps. Most people. You can look at the, you can look at the comments on a lot of those posts. And it's usually calling them out on it a yeah, lot of exactly. and again to your point they are engagement farming right they want those people calling them out because again it drives up engagement and blah blah yeah blah, boogie right? that fucking asshole he got me today i he his post was like i think i i put it on the, my community tab or retweeted it it was like clearly like underneath it he was like hey check out my video discussing this i'm like oh you fuck. yeah but here's the thing mike like uh, nobody with like 10 followers can get you because you argue with everyone on Twitter. I see That's you true. all day long argue That's with true. these people. And it's so funny to me that well, I work like... a I work a door the doorman job at at the bar. I work on the door. So usually I'm just sitting there on my phone the whole time. I guess, yeah, but I'm like, God damn, Mac, this guy has ten followers. Why are you responding to him? It's like, all right, bitch, let's go. Yeah. But no, again, I, I know you you enjoy doing that and it's fun for you. But um uh Oh, I wanted to bring something up. I don't want to lead into a whole other tangent because we hit into our, our 10 minute mark here. But no, we're good. Uh, yeah. One of the thing that are uh, that um, what you just described about the Olympics is absolutely true, right? 
like the people who rise to the top have a lot of gifts, um, either genetically or socially or whatever that lets them kind of rise to the top. But one of the things I don't like about people kind of becoming aware of that and talking about that more is it's not that it isn't true. But I think a lot of people use that as an excuse, though, not to like try yes. where they're like, oh, you know, it's like, you know, society's unfair. You're right. Society's absolutely unfair. hundred percent. But you still got to put in work. and It doesn't mean you can't succeed. And um, not to say that there shouldn't be some changes, right, to, to make things try to make things more fair. Sure, I can I can agree with that. But I think a lot of people have this really defeatist attitude when they talk about stuff like that. And it's like. Like, yes, it's true. I will never be better at basketball than LeBron James. But if I put the work into it, I could still be a pretty decent you know, basketball player. Right. And I I could get farther than you might imagine I could if I really tried at something. And not everything will work out that way. But um, I just see so many people nowadays just have a really defeatist attitude about stuff. I don't think it's healthy. Like you, you should try at stuff. You should be excited about stuff and it won't always work out but you'll get a lot farther than you would imagine just kind of giving up. Yeah. It's sort of like, I think that's the dichotomy between like to put it sort of like very not new in a not nuanced manner. I think that's sort of like the dichotomy between like more like liberal and conservative thought. So like, for example, if we take someone who's like poor, um, Mm -hmm. a liberal will tell you, it's like, well, the only reason they're poor is because they have like everything stacked against them. Job market shit. They can't get out. It's like, you know, there's so many things stacked against them, yada, yada, yada. And like, it's just, there's no possible way for this person to escape. Um, now that's true in some cases. Um, in some cases, yeah. But in most cases, I'm like, no, there's, it, you know, another example to your point, like with incels, I hear this a lot too. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm disgusting. I'm like five foot eight. I can never get a chick. And I'm <laughs> also, it's like, do you have some things stacked against you? Like if like yeah. I'm not six foot, I'm five, nine. Yeah, of course. But if you're saying that like you can't you can't improve anything, you can't go to the gym, you can't get better clothing, you can't like, you know, get better talking to people. Um, will you ever reach the limit of like some like six five fucking like Giga Chad who is like, you know, like just perfectly chiseled features mm. and is just like, you know, God walking on earth? Will you ever get the same success as him? No, probably not. But yeah. if you're going to use that as an excuse, because I can't be him, I should not even try. Yeah. It's like that kind of um, pisses me off. But then on the other end, what drives me nuts is like, or I can, if we can stick it with incels or like dating is then the other end will be like, if they'll look at, and this is actually the inverse of the liberal conservative when it comes to, you know, poverty, I'll see a lot of liberal people say like, well, if you're an incel, you know, you're just, it's just because you haven't gone to the gym and you haven't done this and you haven't done this. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, hang on. If you're a dude and you're like five, six, the dating market's going to be a lot more difficult for you. And that's, that's just something you, that's a completely, is that fair? No, it is completely unfair. It's bullshit, but it's a reality. And that is something stacked against you. That doesn't mean that you should just give up and not try and never improve yourself. Yeah. But it, it is frustrating if you're a five, six dude and someone's telling yeah. you like, height doesn't matter. And then all these girls are like, I want dudes over who are over six yeah. foot. It's like, it's very patronizing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Again, I know this could be a whole other thing. I, we're going to, we're going to go, go to a whole I other know. fucking tangent here. I also, I don't, I don't, this is going to be a whole other thing, but I also find it weird how like, <sighs> there's this whole thing online discourse about ideological purity where um uh people when people have beliefs they 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 want to be so consistent and when they see anyone being not consistent with their beliefs they like attack them or whatever for not basically espousing the same things but yeah but at the same time at the same time they'll do that i also see people violating their beliefs my a great example would be like liberal people who are all about like body positivity and like you know, a body count doesn't matter, whatever, hurling the term incel at someone. And it's like, oh, yeah, no, it's why awful. are you making fun of someone for being an incel when you when your side is supposed to be all about positivity, and inclusivity, right? I get that it's shorthand for like what you're really making fun of them for is basically like your your ideology is preventing you from, you know, finding a woman or whatever. 
But for me, it's like you're kind of a hypocrite and it goes up both ends too. again. Like we talked about before that, like conservative people are supposed to be about individual freedom yet they're they're for banning TikTok or for banning oh, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And it's like it's like it's so infuriating because like it's clear that you're both these sides are like it's not about the ideological purity. It's not about their actual beliefs. It's just about hurting the other side whatever way they can. And that's probably true of all politics forever, right? Like most people, mo- most think, political leaders are hypocrites. Even most um, again, online political leaders, it's more about like being part of a club. That's yeah. sort of like it's sort of, you know, and it, well, that's sort of like how you can test your beliefs where it's like if you believe something and everyone you, who usually agrees with you disagrees with you, how do you react in that situation? Mm-hmm. And I think that that's where you're sort of going to figure out not. You're going to figure out a lot about like your own character, I think yeah. if you're in a situation where like you have all these people backing you up and you um you're usually on board with them and you're like, yes, we're yeah. perfect. We agree. But then the moment you drop a take and then it seems yeah. like everyone around you is disagreeing. Yeah. Who usually agree with you. You can either fold and just be like, oh, no, you guys are right. Or it's like, well, no, hang on. I want to stick to my guns here. Yeah. And you can discuss it. You can debate. You can maybe evolve your understanding. Maybe you are right. Maybe you are wrong. Maybe you'll change your opinion. But if you're a person who's just going to fold as soon, it's like, oh, no, I actually might believe this. But because everyone says I should believe this, I'm going to believe this. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, you're not even a person at that point. You're yeah. like a, you're a, I don't know if you've seen Dune. <laughs> you haven't have you seen <laughs> Dune Part 2 yet? <laughs> no, not yet. I think um, there's a line in the movie where, you know, one of the characters is becoming this, like, he's starting to take on the persona of, like, a messiah figure to the, his, yeah. the Fremen, the other characters. And there's a great line where he goes, they used to be my friends and now they're my followers. Mm -hmm. um it's when you when do you stop becoming sort of like an individual and just start becoming like one of the herd yeah yeah. and in many cases we are always going to be one and the same but especially with online it seems like the you know individual discussion and individual opinions they get lost in the shuffle and it's all about to your point ideological purity like what side are you on pick it any dissent we're not going to even bring up because yeah well, you and me are not afraid of controversy because I said I hate Lala Salamanca from Better Call Saul, and you said you didn't a like Lord of the example. Fucking Rings. <laughs> People yeah. were pissed well, off suck, about that. Suck my dick, Tolkien losers. Fuck you. I think no, no Fellowship. So far, I've watched Fellowship and Two Towers. Fellowship was very good. I think it's a bit too simplistic. Like you know, I, I don't want to say that. It's just not my style. I like something like Dune, which is very like you know you know, very morally gray and like good and evil aren't really defined. They don't really even exist. Um, even semi pessimistic, if you will, whereas something like Lord of the Rings where it's like, we're the good and the brave. And yeah. And it's like, I don't know for me, it's just a little bit, but also I take into account when the books were written and whatnot. Um, but Two Towers, I thought, was kind of ass. I did it, The pacing was just That's so crazy bad. to me. I love Two Towers. Return of the King is actually the one I thought was not as good, which well, I'm curious. When you when you actually get to that, we'll talk about it. Well, it's funny because I know we'll have to eventually get done because so we watched the extended cut of Fellowship. And I, I don't like the extended cuts, by the way. Well, so this is the thing. I was watching Fellowship and I, I shit you not. I think I could tell which scenes were from the extended oh, you, cut. I'm sure you, you can, yeah. And and not from like, it's like, oh, oh, they like different color grading. It's just like, no, no, no. No, they kind of threw off the pacing. You, you, and they then when I cut went, this, yeah. And then when I went online later, I'm like, oh, yeah, I was right. I was like, right, I think like nine out of 10 times. Um, the two towers, we decided to forgo watching the extended cuts. Funny enough, from a friend who is a huge total, like he, yeah, like he like, waited in line to see like the original manuscript yeah. like that's how hardcore he was yeah, yeah. and he, even he was like yeah I probably wouldn't recommend the extended cut of two towers however now I'm kind of in a jam because I've heard from a lot of fans that on one hand the extended cut of the return of the king does have a lot of issues with pacing it does kind of feel like there is a lot of pacing issues but apparently the, the theatrical cut of return of the king 
a lot of fans are hate because as they put it, there are certain characters and plot lines that just get dropped completely. That just never get resolved. I think the big one was spoilers for everybody. And it's not a spoiler for me because I know, but Saruman, who is the, Oh yeah. They don't, they never resolve that for the quasi main villain. I would say of the first two movies, um, his death scene just gets cut from the return of the King. I'm like, that's insane to me. Um, I, but honestly, even when you watch she extended, I don't think it really makes a difference. Like, I think it's still kind of under, uh, climactic either way. Yeah. I would recommend just watching the theatrical cut. I don't like these ten cuts I, at all. I think, I think they gonna... drag. Um, I think if you're going to make it an action movie, which is what Peter Jackson did, you might as well just commit to making an action movie. Um, but I like it. And we'll talk about when you finish it. We'll, we'll eventually talk about that. Um, but I know we're way past our time here. Thank you all for for watching this and stay tuned for the next episode coming soon. Take care, y'all.